After six weeks, a whole lot of good songs, rising expectations, and plenty of drama, we finally have a winner in Sweden. It's Robin Bengtsson's. You guys, ahead of tonight's final, it was all about Victoria and Nano, but then Robin quietly and coolly did his thing. This is surely the first winner ever to spend the first 45 seconds off the stage, walking in looking very sexy, mystery hands touching his gym honed body. That was on point. The treadmill, very creative. It kind of blows Sakis Ruvas from Eurovision 2009 out of the water. Forget Zoe, Zoe who? This is a very fresh, contemporary song. It's not my preferred genre, hand on heart, but I think he sells it very well. This was definitely his best performance. He rose to the occasion, and he slayed with the jury and the public, so well done. Um, I think the right song definitely won. Robin was by far my favorite tonight. Coming into Melody Festival, and I thought, I thought Victoria had it in the bag. I loved her performance in the um, fourth semifinal, but her vocals were a little shaky tonight. And then the audience responded really well to Nano, responded really well to John Henrik. Um, but I think Robin's performance was slick. It was well rehearsed. Everything worked seamlessly. Um, and this is a song and a performance that is primed and ready to go for Kiev. And um, it, it was amazing. By far my favorite. Yeah, it was also my favorite from the final. All, all, from all 28 songs, it was my favorite. Um, it took a while to grow on me, which, which of course is not a good sign when you talk about your vision. But I, I think the performance is just perfect. And the song, it's not, it's it's nothing like really new, but I think with the performance, it really works. Uh, it's similar to Eric Sade. Eric's song wasn't really that strong in 2011, but with the performance, I think that's why he did it so well. And I really can see Robin doing at least top five. Um, I, I really like the song. I really like Robin. I think this is more his kind of music than Constellation Prize was. And I'm really happy that even he came third in the cellar vote, I still think that Sweden will really p pack him um, when coming to Kiev. And also I think this is, even he came to Melodifestan last year, I think this is really the launch of his um, career in Sweden. Yeah, in the past, I thought maybe he was a little stiff, but I think this song loosens him up, so that's very, very nice to see. He's very good looking. I think the charisma is coming. Clearly it has, because he did well with both the juries and the public. I've got to say, though, I'm really surprised at Victoria's placing. I think the jury put her eighth. I mean, I don't know if this is a case in terms of the televote of perhaps people having heard her song or streamed her song too many times and they got sick of it because I actually thought she looked great, sounded great. I thought the staging was great. I was actually watching it with a group of music professionals in Norway and they were all like, clapping when she came on. Um, and also Nano got a huge response with the people I was watching with. We should definitely talk about the televote winner, Nano, Hold On. This was a very emotional and stirring performance. I think he was fantastic tonight. He worked his angles, he worked his voice. There was, there was not a tension in the air, there was a magic in the air when he performed. It's great to see that Sweden responded so well. I agree, and the good thing about Nano's performance is that I think he took what was left of the hype from the first semi-final and really and brought that to life. And uh, he really played to his strengths in the final. Um, performing so late in the show definitely helped him as well, I think. Um, a rightful and deserving winner of the televote. Um, I think as a whole package, Robin's performance is a lot cleaner and a lot slicker. Um, so I think that will translate better on stage in Kiev. But um, Nano was, yeah, it was great. It was a great performance. Yeah, but I think similar to Victoria, Nano's vocals were, they weren't perfect tonight. Um, but I can see why Swedish people voted for Nano the most. I think the song is really radio friendly and I think it's been playing a lot in Swedish radios. And I think also Nano's story and the song and everything is so, it's it's so effective, it's so emo emotional. And I think people really took some power from it um, to their own lives. And I, I think it was really sweet to see Swedish people actually taking Nano like 
he has a rough past, but now she, he is actually becoming a pop star, and he will he will do well in Sweden. But I, I'm happy that um, this song is is not going to Eurovision because I think Robin has more potential doing well in Eurovision. I think Nano's song it, it it was good, but it it doesn't have that like potential to be become actually a, a hit in Europe or do well in the Eurovision. So I I think Robin is better for Sweden, but I'm I'm happy for Nano because. It's good for him that he actually sees some light uh, after all those dark times. And of course, this year's Eurovision theme is Celebrate Diversity. And if we look at the top, you have Nano in second with his very, not unique, yeah, very unique background, all of his difficulties, and obviously the fact he's not a white blonde male. You've got John Henrik serving that Sami realness. You've got Mariette, who I believe is bisexual. She's LGBT, very LGBT friendly. It's great to see such a mix of people in Sweden. I think this final really encapsulated both musical diversity, but also diversity of experience of, of so many things. It was quite heartwarming. You know, we were sitting there watching it and it's like, this is like Eurovision. They put on a Eurovision every year in Sweden. This is so tough. The quality tonight, everyone brought their A-game. You know, even Oa Thornqvist, I enjoyed. I thought it was very touching and sweet. This man who'll be 88 tomorrow is still up there, you know, shaking his stick, eating a hot dog. It, every, John Henrik, those shooting stars coming out of the screen. This is good television. I'm going to make everyone watch this. The shot of John Henrik when he turns to the crowd with the lights, it's a personal highlight. So why don't we close this out with your personal highlights? My personal highlight for me was Robin. Um, in terms of stage performance, everything was great. Um, Victoria was good. Um, again, vocals were not that strong, but she was my favorite entry. And As I Lay Me Down was my favorite song. Um, actually, one of my other favorites was Lisa Ajax. Even though she didn't really perform or perform that well in terms of points, um, her vocal was great. The staging was great. Everything looked awesome. I loved her style. Um, so she was a personal highlight for me as well. But I'll be rooting for Robin. It's probably now my number one out of all of the songs from all of the countries. Um, but yeah, go Sweden. Yeah, it, Robin is also my favorite from all the songs. And yeah, Robin Whitting was really... Because I, I think he didn't see this coming because he wasn't the big one of the big favorites. It was all about Victoria and Nano and maybe John Hendrik. But really seeing all the happiness in his face and it, it was just, it was really, it, it made me like cry from joy. I was really happy for him. But I, like you said, John Hendrik was really touching as well. I, I, I didn't like uh, him back in 2015, but now I'm really grown to like him a lot. I think even he's kind of like outsider, he doesn't like to, be in public that much but I think he really is really likable and I think people are still liking his story and his music and I, I it's so good to see this kind of music in Melbourne Festival and, and like you said it's it's so nice to see so many different kind of people and music in Melbourne Festival it's not just a pop music festival it's it there's everything for everyone and that's really the strength of Melbourne Festival and that is why it's so interesting and so big among the Euros and fans. I'm gonna need a tissue, y'all making me emotional. I also really really love that the winner was a surprise because we knew Mons was gonna win for, for weeks. We knew that Franz was gonna win for weeks. We didn't know Robin was gonna win tonight. We didn't know and it's always nice to see that joy come out of him because it makes us joyous. In any case, that is what we think. What do you think about Sweden's Melody Festival in 2017? Do you think that Robin could win Eurovision? Do you think this song is going to finish on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. And make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And also like the video. And we will see you later. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.